Hi everybody, I'm back in the basement. I've got five tips to help you save money when you're buying those NFTs. Well, I've been collecting these NFTs for about two or three months now. So I have a couple tips for you. These are things that I have learned the hard way, but hopefully uh, can help you out. Some of you may already know these, but uh, they're definitely good ones. Okay, let's get going. Number one is when you are looking to buy, uh, scroll through the first like 10 and take a look at the prices. And if you see that the top, the floor, uh, the lowest ones, there's like a number of them are the same amount or very close, then I would wait a little bit. Because what you're seeing and what I always have to remind myself is the floor is what people are not willing to to pay not will they're what they're willing to pay what they're not willing to pay in other words whatever you're seeing obviously is not cheap enough because no one has bought that sometimes i think i need to buy the floor but really you don't uh so especially when you see a bunch of those bunched up definitely if someone really wants to sell they're going to put the next one in under those couple that are bunched together and so i often if i wait you know 30 minutes keep watching uh, one will pop in lower than those next. And if you watch, sometimes even multiple will, will, uh, will, will pop in lower than the floor that you were originally looking at and you can get it for cheaper. That's worked for me many, many times. So that's number one. Number two is wait till Friday. And the reason why I say wait till Friday is because normally the bigger drop for the week is on Saturday. That's the most exciting one. Obviously, we have comics generally on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and maybe there's a special week like Disney. But for the most part, the big drop is on Saturday. People are looking to sell on Friday. And so those that day is generally the best prices. So if you can, wait till Friday. It's hard, I recognize. But uh, that's really worked out well for me. All right, the third one. The third one is... Look at the number of listings in proportion to uh, the number minted. Okay, so this really only works when you have the uh, collectibles that have you know large, large thousands of uh, of um, NFTs listed. And so you know, especially the comics when they come out, especially the commons, they might have you know you know fifteen thousand, forty eight thousand, and so right away people start listing them. And if you watch the listing number, it you know goes from hundreds to thousands, and that gives you an indication of kind of where you're at. Um, I think that when that listing number is really, really, really big, uh, it's an indication that um, you know there's a lot of people willing to sell, and the price might come down some. Um, now it really depends on when the collectible came out. So if you're looking in the first 24 hours. All kinds of crazy things can happen. But generally, when you're looking at it, if the listing number continues to go up, that means the price still has a chance to come down. So that's what I try and look for, especially when in that first 24-hour period. Because, of course, at some point you're always worried, like, oh, now the price has come down some, but is it going to start you know, pushing up? Well, if you watch the number of listings, uh, that sometimes helps you out. Okay, number four. Number four is load up on uh, collectibles when, uh, when they drop. Okay, what does this mean? Uh, really, you're talking about collectibles that have large amounts. So for the latest one was Storm that came out uh, last week. What you see, and I'll talk about this in number five too, but what you generally see is when a collectible, which has thousands and thousands of uh, minted come out, uh, a lot of times they'll fall underneath the, uh, the listing. Uh, price. So in that specific one, I think it went out for uh, 50, 60 gems and it's fallen. Even the common and uncommons are underneath that. So they're 40, 50. So now is the time if you really believe in that collectible to kind of load up on those, maybe buy a couple if you have some extra gems. Because if you you know can wait and generally for those larger ones, what we've seen like with Spider-Man who was cheap initially um, and then over time, really uh has picked up and now the common and uncommons are you know 200 gems they're around 200 gems but it took a while and so if you can load up and get doubles 
of some of these uh, collectibles under the drop price, I mean, that's the way to go. So the one that I did that with is uh, Storm. But the other thing is, of course, you have to believe in that collectible. Do you think there's going to be some uh, demand for it later on? I happen to believe that, that that Storm will be in demand later on. But, you know, to each his own. But that's what I recommend. Double up on, uh, on collectibles after the drop if you can. And number five is try not to spend all your gems. So once you are completely dry of gems, you know, you really are, it's almost like uh, you're out of options. You have to put more money in, basically. So I try not to, you know, get, use up all my gems. Sometimes you have to or whatever. And the numbers that I'm looking at is really, uh, I think about is like 15 to 20 gems. I always want to have that. Why? Because that will allow me to buy, get two of the comics. Um, generally, as you know, there's about seven gems. So... I try to keep around, you know, 15 to 20 gems and never go underneath that because I don't want to be caught where I have to put more gems in or I have to um, sell something that I don't want to, right? So you want to do a calculation. What I try to do is obviously you have your collectibles, you know, whatever it might be, a Todd or, you know, whatever that you never want to sell. And so you kind of put those over here. And then you have your collectibles that maybe, okay, I could sell in a pinch or something like that. And then you want to have... In my mind, you want to have um, some gems that you could go after things if things drop unexpectedly. But also, you want to have some collectibles that you are looking to flip to make some gems. And so, for example, let's say you had, you know, 100 gems that you, uh, you know, want to use for flipping. So when you have 100 gems, you want to keep 20 of those, as I said, you know, to buy the comics of the week. And now you have 80 gems to try and buy something and have it go up in price, um, maybe 10 or 20 gems, and then try and flip it and make 10 gems. So obviously, if you have more gems, you could buy more expensive things and the margin could be much higher. In other words, the, the, the flipping that you could make is much higher. But you know, you need to look at the amount of gems that you have. For me, what I generally do, and I've said this before, is I play in and have two collectibles in the range of around 200 or 250 gems that I will purchase and then try and flip within seven days. So, for example, the one I'm really big on, and I've said before, is the um, Bruce Tim Harley Quinn. I try to wait for that to go down to around 220, 230, and it inevitably does. I pick it up. And then within maybe about two or three or four days, it gets up to around 260, 270, and I sell it, and I make that, you know, 20, 30 gems. Now, people may laugh because I'm just only making 20 or 30 gems, but for me, that's great. That's a, number, a couple more common comics. I can keep going. I don't have to put any money in. And I can do that with two collectibles because I have about 400 or 500 gems that I can play with there. And I'm using those 500 gems to make, gem, make gems so I have things so I can buy during the week. Um, you may have other uh, collectibles that you find have that same pattern, and that's great. The other um, flipping uh, window that I think is about 30 days, and I mentioned it was Storm. And so a lot of these ones that come out, if you can buy them right at drop, um, even if you don't get them on the drop, sometimes you know people are trying to let them go um, right when the marketplace opens, if you can get them around the drop price and load up on those, the window seems to be about 30 to 60 days on those. So you're going to have to wait longer, but you can make a lot more money. So if you can wait, like with the storm, my plan is, and I did this with Spider-Man, is I bought a bunch of the Spider-Man and then I waited that, you know, 30, 60 days and then they really picked up steam. I sold a bunch of those and made, you know, some good money on that. And that's kind of where I got the money to to buy some other collectibles, but also I'm doing that again with Storm. So if you can find collectibles that you believe in, sometimes the window isn't seven days, the window is 30 to 60 days. And so that's something to think about too. So those are my five tips. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Take care. <music>